What's up everyone? This is Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're going to be looking at part two for how to build a Grubhub clone in Rails 6. Before we jump in, I just want to say be sure to go look at our channel after this video. We're going to start doing daily videos Monday to Friday. Um, and I'm going to be posting a content schedule over there. So if you're interested in the kinds of things we're going to be posting, be sure to go give that a look. With all of that said, let's go ahead and keep going with what we did in part one last time. So in the last video, what we did is essentially uh, go through the Grubhub application or website, whatever you want to call it, and we kind of took down a list of objects that we were seeing while we went through. So what I want to do this time is show you kind of a informal way that I normally will map things out before I kick off any new project or major feature or anything like that. Um, it's not 100% precise, it's not like UML or something, it's more rough than that and I'm normally doing it on paper so I'm going to do it here in Adobe Illustrator uh, so that you can see it. But what we're going to do is just try to organize all of these objects um, and show how they fit together so that we can actually start setting up a Rails app with relationships that make sense. Okay, so let's just start. So we can kind of start anywhere that we want, um, but I'm going to grab this restaurant object here. And so an easy one, so what we're trying to do is essentially establish a, a relationship where like a restaurant has many of something else, um, or something else belongs to something else, that sort of thing. So an easy example of this is a restaurant has many menu items. So what we can do to illustrate that, if we want to say like this menu item belongs to a restaurant, which I think that we can safely say that it does, see if this works, what we can do is draw an arrow like this. And so what this means is that this menu item on the back end is going to have a restaurant ID so that when we look at our menu items table we can say okay which restaurant does it belong to and let's say that this restaurant is like I don't know some barbecue place or something and it has an ID of 25 well if they have like smoked ribs down here uh, as a menu item they're gonna have a restaurant ID equal to 25 so that when we see this menu item we can say okay that belongs to that barbecue restaurant um, let's see, so another thing that we can say belongs to the restaurant is order, right? So a restaurant definitely has many orders, so we can say that the order points over here at restaurant. Um, but we also know that we have users who are making these orders, so we can also say that an order belongs to a user. kind of a horrible looking arrow, but whatever, we'll leave it. Okay, so what do we want to look at next? So let's take a look at this review. So I'm going to move these down a bit. So what does a review relate to? Well, a specific user leaves a review. It's obviously got to do with a restaurant, and I would argue that it also has to do with a specific order. So what I would probably do is say that actually a review belongs to an order, it belongs to a user, and it belongs to a restaurant. Now there are potentially some other ways to approach this. You could just say, well actually a review just needs to belong to an order since the order already knows about user and it already knows about restaurant. And that's fair. Um, we might or might not cut these so they're not like officially connected they're sort of connected through the, the order object um, sometimes it can be handy to just have these IDs there um, for you know running stats or quick lookups or whatever later um, but we'll decide that later but as as a con conceptual point uh, the review does in fact relate to a user and order and a restaurant if you don't remember some of these objects, just go back to the first video and do a quick refresher. Um, but we still have a few things left to deal with here. So this category. So category was at the top of the screen, so it would say like, you know, Asian restaurants or Italian restaurants or whatever. Um, so the, the category relates to a restaurant. Um, 
but it's not quite so straightforward as just to say that um, you can't say that a category has many restaurants necessarily um, because that would mean that the restaurant has to have a category ID and a restaurant could actually belong to multiple categories so you know you could be fast casual and you could be Italian and you could be you know something else potentially so to kind of explain what I mean a little bit more like imagine that we did say okay a restaurant does indeed belong to a category what that means is now let's say this category is Italian and it has an ID of like 10 in the database over here now we need to put a category ID on restaurant and say okay the category ID equals 10 and that's how we know it's Italian but since a restaurant can have multiple categories that it's a part of, this won't work because now if we wanted to add our fast casual category, there's nowhere to put the ID. So the trick to get around this is actually to create what's known as a many-to-many -many relationship, which we already have. We have a couple of them, actually, but we just haven't called it out um, so much. So what we can do is in here, we can create a new object which is sort of a meta object in a way or something. Um, what we can do is create something called like category inclusion. And so what this does is the category inclusion will both belong to the restaurant and belong to the category. And this creates a, essentially what's called a join table, I think. If I'm not messing that up. Um, but essentially it's a table that sits between these two things and we can look at this and say okay there is a restaurant ID of 10 and a category ID of 25 and then we can look at those and say okay those things belong to each other so this allows us to have a restaurant that has many categories and a category that has many restaurants so this is a many to many relationship okay so we're getting a picture now of how this could look let me center this stuff back up okay so Let's just grab our time open. So this was basically like, you know, we need to say that our restaurant, our barbecue, or our Italian restaurant, or whatever, um, is open, you know, Monday from 9 until 11 p.m., or, or whatever, right? And then we have, every day, we have a time that's it, that it's open. Um, so what we can do here is just say, okay, this just straight up belongs to the restaurant, and they have many of them. And the reason they have many of them is because Essentially, these are time slots in a way. So you're saying, okay, on Mondays, we're open from this time to this time. On Tuesdays, from this time to this time. You could potentially set this up where, you know, the restaurant has, <clears throat> I would say, like uh, an attribute for the Monday hours, an attribute for the Tuesday hours, and so on. I think this is probably a better way to do it because it allows you to come in and say, okay, this specific day we're going to block out and say we're closed for a holiday or whatever. So this is sort of like, think of this as like kind of a calendar object. And there may be more to this than we're giving credit for right now. And that's sort of the case with all of this. We're, what we're trying to do here is sort of lay out a landscape of how we think things fit together. And we may need to expand and make some of this more complicated as we go. As I said, the real Grubhub product is bound to have way more objects than we have here this is just a starting point so keep that in mind as we go through this won't be identical to what they have on the back end theirs will be more complicated and depending on how far we go with this ours might get significantly more complicated okay so we've got just a couple more things here um, to look at and the offer one this is something that I took note of because I saw it pop up on one of the main pages. And I'll show you how I think it probably fits in or could fit in, but I don't, I don't know if we'll build this out or not. Um, but I, like, I think that the offer is basically, um, so it's either something that directly just belongs to the restaurant where you can say, okay, right now I have this special discount. Or it's something where like Grubhub says, who wants to offer 10% off? and then restaurants opt in or out. I'm not sure how that is, I haven't really looked at it, but let's just assume for now that it's something that belongs to the restaurant. You can see here we have sort of a central object at this point, which makes sense. I mean, it's an app about ordering stuff from restaurants, right? So it kind of makes sense that that would be fairly central. 
Okay, the last thing we have is this menu item category, which is basically a way to create groupings for your menu items. And the way that I'm going to structure this, I can, I can imagine multiple ways this could happen, but the way that I want to do it is to say a menu item belongs to a menu item category, and the menu item category belongs to the restaurant. So essentially the restaurant will be able to create menu item categories and then tag their menu items with those and then we're going to use those categories to create groups of menu items. Okay, so last, I just realized that I am missing a couple of uh, objects here. So an order can have many menu items, right? Sort of. Um, you can, when you make an order, obviously you're going to have one or more items that you're ordering from the restaurant. And this sort of demands another object because I can't say that a menu item belongs to an order because again, that menu item has got to be a part of many orders and an order has to have many menu items potentially. So that means we need another many to many relationship. Um, so I'm going to copy this and our diagram is starting to get kind of messy, which uh, is bound to happen. Um, so I'm going to call this line item, sort of an accounting way to look at it. Uh, how do I get that? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is say that a line item both belongs to a menu item and it belongs to an order, which makes sense, right? I mean, so this way our order can know what menu items are included and then um, we could actually on the other side of that the restaurant could look at it and see you know how many times a particular menu item has been ordered because the it can access through the line items object there so last like I said I don't know if we will take advantage of building out this offer situation here um, we may leave that alone, but just for the sake of semi-completeness, this is definitely not complete, but for the sake of, you know, kind of wrapping up at least what's on the screen here, if I were taking advantage of an offer, I would expect that there's some sort of offer ID on my order. And this gets into kind of a conversation about many-to-many -many versus one-to-many, like how do you know? Like you could technically build out the system where I could have multiple offers as a part of my order. So think of that like multiple coupon codes or something like that. So I add up a $10 off and a 25% off or whatever. But you know, most of the time you're only allowed to use one coupon code, but that's really a business decision. Um, so this could go multiple ways. What I would do is just say uh, the order has an offer ID. So, and this kind of doesn't really make sense to me personally to say like the order belongs to the offer. Technically that's what's happening because of this arrow, but just saying like, what essentially what you're doing is saying this order can reference the offer, and so this order would have an offer ID so we can go back and look at our order and see what exact offer we took advantage of. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of, it's kind of it. I think that this time open is likely to get more complicated. We may do that a little bit later on once we kind of get the rest of this built out a little bit. I just realized uh, one other thing that I think we're going to have to probably add here, which is think about who's going to manage this restaurant. Like who can log in and create menu items and line items and or, or not items, menu items and set the time open and all this kind of stuff. So it has to be a user, right? So we've got to have some way to identify, you know, which user is, when they log in, able to do that. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that. And what I think I would probably want to do, there's a couple of things. We could create a different type of user and you actually log in through a different interface and that might be a good idea we could also just make the user have special permissions so um, let me think about that for a second okay so I may change this so 
once I have had time to work through this, or even once we get started, we may change this. But let's create for now an object just called team member. And I'm going to keep it simple. And we're going to just say that a team member belongs to the restaurant. So we got so many things now belonging to the restaurant. So there's a lot of ways that you could do this. I think, you know, you could definitely make this a many to many relationship so that let's say that I work at multiple restaurants, I just have one login and I can switch between the restaurants. Um, and there could be a good argument, you know, maybe I own multiple restaurants or something like that. Um, and so we may go in that direction. I don't know. That's kind of the thing, you know, there's always trade offs. Um, it's probably a little more difficult to manage like the login and all of that kind of stuff if we do it that way. I don't know. I'm going to think about that. So just bear in mind, this could be a one-to-many or a many-to-many -many by the time we actually do it. Um, but you can think on it and you can actually make your own choice. I would encourage you to draw this out and to kind of consider if this is how you want to set yours up or if you want to do yours differently. Um, but anyway, I think that's about it for this episode. Um, definitely take the time to draw this out on paper and keep it handy as we build through this. Um, and um, I guess I will talk to you in the next episode where we will start actually building uh, the product and writing some code.